homophobia, the fear of being without your phone, it's a real condition. So every time you add an app, or every time you buy and add a new accessory to your phone, it's like adding a new tool to your toolkit. And you have that toolkit with you all the time. So what I want to show you is examples of how it's been used. But the first thing I want to dismiss is the idea that it is strictly and only limited to what you can do with the phone. Over the last four years, I've hosted a conference in Ireland that has explored mobile journalism from many different facets. I'll talk about it again at the end of the presentation. Um, there's a split community. There are those who believe that Mojo is strictly by definition what you do with the smartphone. And then there are those who believe that it's a little bit more liberal. He's saying yes, okay, I'll just stay here then. Um, it's about using the creative tools that are available to you now within the consumer electronics market. Whether that's a pocket drone, or a 360 camera, or a DSLR, or a GoPro, it's part of an ecosystem, but an ecosystem that basically puts the storyteller at the heart of the process. It's all about empowering the individual journalist to create multimedia content by themselves. So I'm sure you all know, a traditional crew, how many people, hands up, work for a TV broadcaster? One. Okay, two, three, four. Okay, we're slowly getting there. Um, this is not an atypical broadcast camera equipment kit. This would be the kit that the camera crews in my former organization would have every day to gather the news. Professional broadcast camera, tripod, microphones, laptop, light kit, all that stuff. Would anyone like to guess how much this bundle of equipment costs? In euros, preferably. I don't know what it translates in the way to Too much. Okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> that's the best answer. Yes, exactly my point. So, in our country, that's me and my alter ego, in my country it's around 60,000 euros. That's a pretty decent car, effectively, that we give to the cameramen every day. Well, by the way, we give them a car as well, and I haven't put that into the price. But that's another story. So that's what it costs for us to go out and create 1 minute 30, maybe 3 minutes, maybe 5 minutes of content on a typical day for our news bulletin. And it's built that way because we are bound by technical standards, defined by the likes of the European Broadcasting Union and others, for how broadcast television must be made. But the interesting pivot is that mobile has in the last 10 years become an entire ecosystem in its own right. Now when I started in television nearly 20 years ago, I was fascinated by all the kit. I'm, I'm a gadget guy. You'll get the gist in a while. But I remember walking into one of our edit suites and it was 80,000 euros, that edit suite. I can now edit content on my smartphone in higher quality than what we would have been capable of doing 10 years ago in that edit suite. That's how much this technology has evolved within that time frame. So by comparison to the broadcast kit that you've seen, this would be the kit that we would typically give the mobile journalists in RT, the organization I left in December. It consists of a phone and not always an iPad. Okay? So a phone, some way to put the phone on a tripod, a couple of microphones, a tripod, a stabilizer, a light, and a battery pack. What type of phone, Glenn? Are we talking about smartphone or regular phone? So very much a smartphone, and I will grasp the thorny issue of Android versus iOS in a minute. Perfect. Out of curiosity, how many people in the room are Android users? Hands up. Min or Android? Less okay. Than half. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so, is it more than half. Anyone else iOS? <laughs> Any Windows phone users? <laughs> One. A new, phone a new user. Nokia. Nokia. Yeah, I haven't talked about Nokia. <laughs> okay. And um, well, look. Guess how much for this kit? Not too much, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So all of that, including the iPad, would cost you around four thousand euros. And for that, for that, I can shoot in extremely high quality. I can edit in extremely high quality and send that back to the station. I can live stream in extremely high quality. I can record and edit radio reports. You kind of get the gist of where this is going. It's a completely dynamic tool that can be used right across the media spectrum. 
And I'm not even talking about the photographs and the social media access and everything else that comes with it as well. So it's kind of a no-brainer, as we would say in Ireland. Now, in the early days of mobile journalism, its biggest weakness, aside from poor camera quality, was sound. And in our station, the engineers all fought very, very hard against Mojo, all based on the idea that the sound quality was not good enough for broadcast. Now, in the last four years, companies like Sennheiser, Shure, DPA, Rode, and other big broadcast <coughs> brands have all brought microphone solutions to market specifically for mobile journalism. If you don't know any of these brands, Sennheiser is the company that makes all of the professional microphones in the station that I work for. All of them, in the studios, on location. Sennheiser have a whole suite of products designed specifically to enable that device to record broadcast quality sound. So audio is no longer an issue. Hopefully there's sound. Now towards the emergency exit, there is a great deal of confusion here. Now this is how an awful lot of news organizations that I've dealt with have chosen to use Mojo. Breaking news situations, you have an app on your phone, you're in the middle of the story, you press a button and you're live. On television, in this case, this is Sky News from the UK. Do you remember this incident? Just over a year ago, the date is on it. Yeah. March 2016, probably in our live picture. And one of their we correspondents just happened to be at check-in in Brussels uh, airport when that bomb went off. So he had the foresight to go, so I'll just press the button on my phone, and I'm live on Sky um, News, relating for the viewers, uh, I do on a second with phone, to go back to your point, you have to two phones. Uh, soil, multiple, they actually give them three, but we won't go there. Uh, and he's live on air telling people what it's like to be on the ground. Every other news organization, my former one included, were scrambling to find content on social media. They had a professional journalist on the ground giving a first-person view of the story as it broke, all because he had a solution on his phone that enabled him to go live. That's a no-brainer. There are solutions out there, lots of them, that will allow you to do this. And that's not even including the likes of Periscope or Facebook Live or YouTube Live. These are all professional solutions for TV broadcasters, or the two lower ones are for radio broadcasters be able to go live on air from your phone for radio broadcast. So it has evolved to the point that there are plenty of solutions no matter where you exist within the media spectrum. But is that the true potential? Is that as far as you can push the envelope for what you can create? I beg to say no. Have a look at this. Sam? Mohammed Ghanemi fled the war in Syria in 2012. He and his family came to Ireland from Lebanon okay, under a resettlement program in 2015. Now in Cork, he's building a bakery business from scratch. We're making bread, Syrian bread. You know, it's Syrian bread. Before the war, Mohammed led a happy and successful life in the northern province of Idlib. I have big house. I have everything, you know. But when I left Syria, Syria to came to Lebanon, I have nothing. When he arrived in Ireland, his priority was to learn English. Because I have to start my life again. It's the third time I start my life again. Mohammed doesn't have a background in baking, but he spotted a business opportunity. All Syrian people need this bread, you know. We love this bread. We can't eat without this bread. Using machinery imported from Egypt, the small Syrian community in Cork has helped Mohammed get the business off the ground. So far, his bread is being sold to halal shops and restaurants. But his ambition is to get it onto supermarket shelves. It's important to work, you know. I can't, I can't stay at my house all the time, you know, because it's, if, if you go to work, you, you, I feel happy, you know. Yes, it's hard way, but um, ambition. Success stories involving Syrian refugees are emerging around the world. After several years of horror and hardship, Mohammed hopes his fortunes are also on the rise. Philip Bromwell, RTE News, Cork.
former colleague has done is he's used this device in exactly the same way as he would use a larger camera. It could be a DSLR, it could be his broadcast VJ camera. He's used it to create a really engaging visual story that follows the rules of sequences, beginning, middle, and end. We start with the dough, we end up with the bread being fat. And it's a human interest-led story, not a bleeds that leads type story. Now, interesting point on that, because I'm involved in a project with BBC right now, and BBC is testing these kits in the field with their news crews to see how they hold up under pressure for the bleed to bleeds type news stories. They work great for features, they work great for social short form, but will they hold up for the big news story? Come back in about a week and two time, and I should be tweeting to give you some examples of the first round of findings from it. So, I'd love to be in a Coca-Cola ad with Bruce Springsteen. Hobby or obsession? I love the colour red. <laughs> $600 in the collection. Is there like an addiction in a way? I love meeting many me's, if you will. I'm sure I'll be collecting till the day I die. I'd like to dance. I'd hate to dress up them. I'd wash them and iron them as if I had nothing to do. I'll never stop. Same stop, I'm dead. <laughs> the Collectors, July 26th on RTE One. So the reason I show you this little promo is a former colleague of mine in RTE shot this as well. This is a broadcast documentary, one hour long. And she spent three months on location following these people who are collectors, quirky collectors. And initially when this documentary was broadcast, we had to down convert the quality that was shot on the phone to HD because it was shot in 4K. Does anyone in the room, hands up, know what 4K is? Three or four, yeah, very good. I will touch on it in a few minutes. But it basically meant that the content she created was four times higher quality, higher resolution, than what RT was capable of broadcasting. We had to down convert it to make this documentary ready for broadcast. The two takeaways from it, above anything else, are number one, she said that it gave her access to the individuals that she would never have achieved with the bigger cameras. She was able to go into their homes, have a cup of tea, sit down, have a chat. It became very honest, very intimate, very quickly. And she got a, a real insight into their lives. And over the course of the documentary, she managed to figure out the psychological motivations for why they collect these things. Now, when this was broadcast, RT was very nervous about it because no one else in Europe had done this, not in 4K. And the key takeaway for us was once we got past the pretty picture part to set up the story, it was a pivot. You saw the lady with the dolls. You notice the lady with the dolls? Looked a little bit perhaps unhinged, maybe. I don't know. But here's the thing. That lady's daughter had died from cancer three years earlier. And she started with one of her daughter's dolls mm. and had gradually started to build up this doll collection as a way of coping with the loss of her daughter. There was a very deep personal meaning for why she was collecting the dolls. And that's what Eleanor managed to do with this documentary. She managed to get an intimate insight into these people's lives in a way that genuinely, and this has been proven by a couple of studies that the Reuters Foundation have done, that you get more intimate access to people when you shoot with these much smaller devices. They know what they are. There's no mystery. They forget about them just as quick as they see them. In fact, sometimes you'll end up giving them a little crash course explaining the apps and what everything does. That happens quite a lot. So that's an example of a one hour documentary, all shot on a smartphone. Al Jazeera has done this. In fact, Al Jazeera, to the best of my knowledge, was one of the first organizations to do this. Again, Songs of Syria. And that's about four years ago. Not in 4K, because 4K wasn't around then. So what else is it capable of that we're perhaps not tapping into? Well, can I see a show of hands for how many people own an iPad? Almost half the room, I'd say. Well, if you happen to have a phone and an iPad, or a current phone and an older phone and an iPad, then you basically have a complete TV production studio. At our conference this year gone in May, we had four phones, you just see them on the tripods right there, all being vision mixed on an iPad on the desk, live to YouTube in HD. It broadcast for eight hours over the course of the conference interviewing the guests as they came off stage. Here's a sample.
And joining me now is Yusuf Omar, who is the senior social reporter with the London Bureau of the CNN. And can I just say, of all the people that have sat here today, you are looking the most dapper with those glasses. Why, thank you. I'm wearing the uh, Snapchat spectacles, which is my uh, wearable journalism. Okay, so tell us, what do the glasses do? Okay, in its simplest form, you've got a very wide angle lens on it. So I press this button, you can see a flashing light, so you know that I'm recording. And I can record 10, 20 seconds at a time. I really like this technology at the moment. Uh, it means that I can interview you or speak to you without being shielded behind a wall, which is our mobile devices or cameras. But even more interesting, what I'm actually fascinated about is this idea of round video. The whole conference is, is debating, should we do square video? Should we do vertical video? Should we go landscape sideways? These guys have cracked it. They've said, hey, why not do round? Which means I can be watching it this way or this way which is quite cool. It's kind of like the human eye, which means it will work on, on, on a vertical landscape, it'll work on a landscape landscape. Uh, and I believe that the future of video is actually round. But you know what they say, Chris? Okay, so that's Yusuf Omar. If you're interested in someone who is really genuinely a millennial and sees Mojo through a whole different perspective, he's another Thompson Foundation trainer. He's a really, really cool guy. He's ex-CNN now. But uh, definitely worth uh, having a look at some of the stuff that he's doing, particularly in the social media space. Would, again, Screaming shot at mobile phone because the content is good, the content is engaging, the speakers are good. The devices are just a way to capture that and it's a conference about mobile, so it's a case of kind of proving the point, if you will. Okay? So let's talk about it. Android, Windows versus iOS. Can, can, I, can I stop you here for a bit? Sure. Uh, just to engage also with the audience. Um, I will just shift now into Arabic. بدي اسال الان الجمهور هلا لما بتكونوا انتم ضيوف حلقه وفي موجود موبايل على كاميرا بتصوركم بتاخذوا الموضوع جد ولا بيصير في كويستشن مارك اذا هذا مهني او مش يعني انا شوف التصوير بالتليفون مو بروفيشنال بالنسبه لي يعني انا اتكلم يعني اذا انا بصور باحث عندي بالدوام استحي اصوره بالتليفون احس اني انا مو ماخذ يعني مو معطيته قدره او مو معطيته حجمه في انا لما اصوره بالتليفون. اوكي؟ ما انا هذا رايي ما بحترم وجهه نظرك، في حدا ثاني عنده راي ثاني؟ تفضل استاذ. ممكن المايكروفون للاخ ال... اذا في ناس ثانيين برضه لو ورجوني بس اصابعكم علشان جديه المذيع او المحاور هو اللي يفرض طبيعه الحوار. اما الاله سواء كان تليفون او كاميرا عاديه هذه ما اعتقد انها راح تكون لان غالبا هو راح يوجه نظره الى المذيع ويحاول يتفاهم اسئلته وغيرها. آه. فما يمثل شيء يعني حاجز او شيء يعوق اللقاء او الحوار حضرتك ايش تشتغل انا في وزاره وزاره الدفاع بالوزاره الدفاع. طيب لو لو حكى حد حدا حكى مع حضرتك بتليفون من تلفزيون الكويت نعم. او سي ان ان وطلبوا مقابله وبدك تتوقع انهم جايين بالكرو مزبوط نعم. يعني عندهم فريق تصوير نعم واجا صحفي وبعاه موبايل والترايبل زي هيك نعم شو رده فعلك اعتقد يعني بحكم التطورات التكنولوجيه الحين في العالم ما راح يكون عندي رده فعل سلبيه نعم. اطلاقا يعني أوكي. لكن على حسب الحدث نفسه والاسئله والموضوع ما راح اركز على الامور الهامشيه هذه ابدا بالنسبه لنا كصحفيين حقيقه الموبايل ريحنا كثير في عمليه الكاسيت القديم وتحرك من الكاسيت الى التسجيل التسجيل الصوتي يعني. نعم بالنسبه نعم. للتسجيل الصوتي نعم. هذه واحده الكاميرا والتقنيه اللي حصلت في التطورات الاخيره خدمتنا برضه كثير في ان احنا ناخذ صوره صحيحه ناخد صورة البروفيشنال بتاعها عالي وبتخدمنا في صفحات الصحف بس جزء بسيط انه التقنية المستقبلية اللي احنا متوقعينها كصحفيين ان بالفعل العدد اللي هو البعد بعد الكاميرا احيانا الريزوليشن بتاعها ما بيخدمش لكن اعتقد في التقنيات المتقدمة هيكون الكلام ده افضل وهيساعدنا بالفعل بدك بدك جلين يعمل لك دورة تدريبية <تصفيق> شكرا صباح الخير يا هلا انا اعلامي فيما يخص الموبايل كاعلامي انا اعتقد الضيف للان خاصه في مجتمعنا في الكويت الحين ما في قابليه لان يعني تدخل على ضيف رسمي ما عندك كاميرا ما عندك مصور يعني شوي يكون فيها نوع من البرستيج فيما يخص الاحداث الطارئه او حدث معين انا ممكن استخدم موبايل كاعلامي واستعين في نشرات اذا كان حدث معين بس اذا كان يعني شخصيه رسميه لازم يكون كاميرا موجوده للان ما يعني حتى الاعلاميين احنا في وزاره الاعلام للحين ما اخذوا على نظام الموبايل للان ما دخلنا في نظام الموبايل 
فنعتقد يعني نحتاج شو نوع من التدريب نوع من الثقافه الى الان نعم فالجرائد الالكترونيه بدات فيه بس احنا كتلفزيون الكويت الان لسه and well before i go what's next can i just take that point about the quality or oh, the absolutely. professionalism so and prestige and prestige i get the prestige argument okay <laughs> when, when i started doing this training for the camera people in RTE, they were very, very reticent to give up the 60,000 euro camera that they had to replace it with a phone. I completely accept the argument about the idea of if you're going to interview an official, that the official may feel in some way undermined or, you know, insulted by turning up with a phone. However, things change. So I've been doing this for seven years. The first client that I had this year was the Irish government. I went in to train all of the media and communication teams in the Irish government because the Taoiseach, the leader of our country, decided that he wants all his staff to be capable of creating content in the field. It's an interesting pivot. It's the first time, to the best of my knowledge, that an organization that manages the media of the government have taken it upon themselves to create content rather than simply manage media organizations and hope they get the message out. Yeah. So, if the government have decided that Mojo is good enough for them, I'm kind of pivoting towards the idea that I think people will come round. It will take some time until it arrives to yeah, our part of the world. It's a, and no. I'm not saying throw out all the big cameras, because there's one thing that these cameras can do that the smartphone is not good at yet, and that's Zoom. So you talked about taking photographs with your camera when you're doing research and how you like yeah. to use the Zoom on your camera to be able to get close, not close to the phone. That's a very valid argument. That's a case for when, as I said at the start, a mixed economy is the right solution. But don't underestimate the potential and don't underestimate the opportunity of what mobile brings. At least consider it. Absolutely. Yeah. To survive, and this will be a point I'll get to in the end, we really need to start to innovate and experiment and move outside the comfort zone. What we all do well for our linear broadcast model is, whether we're in denial or not, in slow decline. We need to be able to actually encourage members of staff who are good storytellers who are being underutilized. This is a perfect device to bring those people forward. And I can give you case studies of where that has worked, not just in RT, but in other organizations as well. Okay? So, on the Android, Windows, iOS debate, can I just say, one, I'm not on commission from Apple, or Samsung, for the record. I chose iOS when I started this project because they were first to market and because they did two things that were very clever early on. One, the App Store, and two, the made for iPhone program that Apple allowed people to license the old dock connector, now the new connector, to make accessories. So I'll share these afterwards. I don't know how many of you use Twitter in Kuwait. Uh, last time I remember it was like not that popular, but I'll share some of the accessories and things via Twitter afterwards. I'll give you a link. But there are far more accessories designed for iOS right now for this professional media content than for Android. Part of that is because there's 27,000 different Android devices. There's about 17 iOS. It's much easier to make accessories for just 17 different models. Anyway, moving on. The key message, and the gentleman down there made this point extremely well, they're only going to get better. So don't gauge your understanding right now based on what you think the limitations are. In the last year alone, we've seen a pivot to a two times built-in camera. It's inevitable that as time goes on, the sensor will get better and we'll get even more. In fact, not only that, but 4K and the actual encoding system that supports 4K, the battery technology driven by Tesla. And remember who's behind these companies. This is Apple, Google, Facebook, Twitter. All the social media giants are driving this agenda. So again, foolish to discount it at this point, I would say. So 4K, in case you haven't heard, it's four times higher resolution than standard HD. That's a very, very substantial jump in quality. And most of the premium devices in the market, Android or iOS, are all capable of now creating and editing content in 4K. With a few small exceptions, there are very few broadcasters in the world broadcasting in 4K right now. But I can share my content on Facebook, on Vimeo, or on YouTube. That's what I meant by an end-to-end -end ecosystem. One other thing, again, to go to the fore, where we're going next. So by 2020, we're going to be moving to the next generation of mobile phone data network, 5G. 
and just look at this number over here anywhere between 10 to 100 times greater data speeds with your mobile device that basically means that when it comes to sharing content whether that's downloading or uploading it it is going to be blazingly fast so 4k no longer is an issue as it is right now and all that is just on the horizon it literally is already been tested around Europe the other key thing is the low latency so live streaming in 4k will be driven by this new technology as well and it's on our doorstep two other quick comments how many of you have experienced 360 or VR? Two people. Wow. Okay. Well, this is only three years old, but basically three years ago, you had to get a group of cameras together in a special mount, and you had to record all the content and bring it into a high-end editing system and make this 360-degree video content. Now, for $200, you can buy a 360 camera that will shoot 4K on your phone, edit it, and share it in almost real time. I have a little video that explains it. The other thing, just to sprinkle a little icing on top, is augmented reality, which is really in its infancy. It's only in the last 12 months that both Apple and Google have both said AR is the future. Again, how many people in the room have experienced AR? Talala, well impressed. Very good, very good. Four, okay. Well, here's the quick explanation. This is 360 video. It's a Facebook promo, but if you just watch the girl in the Facebook timeline, she sees the little 360 icon, she taps on the clip, and then she can look around or pan around with her finger in the space. She can see everything in the scene. You can switch it to what's called the magic window mode, where by moving the phone around, you're physically looking around the scene. But the real high-end experience comes when you put your phone into some sort of a head-mounted display because then you get true immersion. Then you're no longer using your hands to look like a little window. Then your eyes, your entire peripheral field of vision is literally in a scene. You feel as though you are there. And this is only three years old. The vast majority of people will not run out and spend 800 or more on an Oculus Rift. The vast majority of people will experience this through their mobile phone. Augmented reality, well, you could do two things. You could run around the place looking for Pokemon or you could get the IKEA app and have a look and see what it would be like to actually have IKEA furniture in your house. So in the app, you scan your room, you open the IKEA catalog, you find a piece of furniture that you think might work in the room. This will take a second. It's their promo, not mine. I think the yellow chair is the one that he finally went for. There you go. And yellow chair in your living room and you can move around it in real time as though you want to see how it might fit with other pieces of furniture this is augmented reality you might say what's that got to do with news think about big news events where you might need contextual information about an actual location you're out and you go to the public and say we've done a huge amount of work around this particular monument this particular event when they're there they can look through their phone and get overlays think Iron Man overlays on their phone of what's going on with extra contextual information. And all that, again, is driven by your mobile phone. So let's stop thinking just video and start looking at what's coming next. Now, two other quick trends. I know I'm running over time. One is artificial intelligence. So if any of you have heard of IBM Watson, that's just one of the different systems that are out there right now doing data mining, massive algorithmic processing, and basically allowing us to create automation. And this is going to be huge for news. At the very least, you could feed in your entire video archive into an automated engine. And right now, that's exactly what IBM are looking for client partners to do. And it can actually start to recognize faces in the archive, and it will start to tag them automatically. Think about how your archiving traditionally works. It depends on people putting in metadata to say, you know, that is X. And if they don't recognize someone, they're never tagged. AI could scan an entire library, again, that will manifest itself into a mobile engine eventually. Uh, I'll skip through these because they're not really that relevant anymore. They're all to do with the kit. Can I just say, for anyone who thinks that you can't edit high quality content on your phone, this company, LumaFusion, are actually derived from the company Avid. Avid 
are the main newsroom video editing system for a huge amount of broadcasters, including the one that I used to work for. So LumaFusion is a serious editing app, works on iPhone, works on iPad, multiple tracks, can support 4K, can support 360 content. So again, these are all things worth experimenting on. If you're lucky enough to have one of these, you can of course use Avid or Premiere or whatever your editing app is of choice. So two final points. I'm not saying TV is dead. Please don't think that's what the message is here. Not at all. TV news is in trouble. And don't take that from me. I have two slides that will reiterate that and back it up. But TV will always be the shared experience for the family, for the gang, to get together and enjoy something together. But mobile, it's much more intimate. It's much more personal. It's both private and social, but it's also niche. And this is where we're missing a trick. Because niche storytelling is where the likes of YouTube has managed to create entire communities that broadcasters have failed to manage. We need to be creating content for niche communities. We need to be telling stories outside the mainstream stories. And this feeds in very, very cleverly into a kind of a, a revitalization of what's called constructive journalism. There's a movement around Europe at the moment all about constructive journalism. And it's about looking at news through a different lens. I don't mean that literally. I mean taking news stories from a different perspective, more analytical. So this is a little promo by Reuters. If I'm over time, I'm happy to skip this. Do you want me to skip this? No, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. fine. Well, just look at some of the statistics here. Yeah, 
Cambridge Analytica. Google them. Google them after today. Do a tiny bit of research on them. They've come up with algorithms that will allow you to tailor your content to target individuals using psychosymmetric targeting. It really is a rather scary insight into where social media is going to go in the coming years. It's happening now, but as they grow, the client base will also grow with them. That's a document that I would strongly encourage you to have a look at. If you want to test your smartphone's capabilities, take a photograph of that link. You can have a look at and read of that later on, because that was the one that, I have to say, left me somewhat dumbfounded. Okay, so con the constructive journalism movement. I am going to wrap up in a second. Um, this is about looking at news through a different perspective, and it's a growing movement. The European Broadcasting Union has gotten in heavily behind this idea of constructive journalism. And there are some very, very compelling statistics. If you look up um, Ulrich, who's the guy that's founded this company, he has some amazing slides and videos on YouTube that show exactly how constructive journalism can actually turn your audience decline into audience growth. And it's not about going for all fluffy soft stories. It's still dealing with hard news, but in a con more constructive way. And Mojo feeds 100% into that model because it means that more stories can be covered more efficiently. If you still think it's a good idea to go out to cover a 30 second clip for Twitter with a 60,000 euro broadcast camera, then you're basically resigning yourself to drawing in thumb screw with a sledgehammer. That's the message, okay? Horses for courses. If you need it for TV, do it for TV. But for social, you need nothing more than this. Okay, final couple slides, if you will humor me. I just want to play this one clip and then I'll wrap. I'm dropping a few at the end, is that okay? That's fine. This is Jon Snow. You may know him, you may not know him. He's a presenter with Channel 4 News in the UK. He did the uh, McTaggart lecture at the Edinburgh Film and Television Festival this year. And I watched the entire speech. It's an incredibly poignant speech. It's an hour long. But this one little tiny clip from me sums the whole problem that we have up in a nutshell. The explosion of digital media has filled neither the void left by the decimation of the local newspaper industry nor connected us any more effectively with the left behind, the disadvantaged, the excluded. Never have we been more accessible to the public, nor in some ways more disconnected from the lives of others. And that sums it up in a nutshell. We've kind of created our own echo chamber. What mobile brings to the party is it gives us a chance to reach audiences that we usually don't reach in our linear narrative. It allows us to tell stories that deserve to be told, but because of the bottleneck that we use for the way we make news, we never get to tell those stories. So see it for the opportunity that it is. It's a chance to give a voice to the voiceless. It's a chance to tell stories that otherwise go untold. It's a time or a chance to win back a community that we may have lost to the likes of Facebook and Twitter. That's it. Okay, أهمية الشوت سواء كان صورة ولا شوت مثل ما بتحكي ما بيجي من النظرة انه والله هذا ريزوليوشن عالي ولا ريزوليوشن خفيف لما بيكون الحدث غريب وشيء اسمه سبق صحفي سواء يعني واحد الوحيد اللي هو مثلا يعني صور هالشيء وانتشر ما بيعود واحد بينظر لشيء اسمه ريزوليوشن بقدر ما ينظر لأهمية الأحداث الحدث بنفس الوقت ممكن يكون واحد بيلعب فوتوشوب بيلعب اي شيء بيعمل اي شيء ممكن جدا يعمل شيء حلو وهو شيء كاذب فصدق صدق الشوت او الصوره سواء كان يعني من فيديو او صوره بيكون يعني حسب الاهميه وما له علاقه ريزوليوشن بهي الحاله بس لان ما عم ناخذ نحن لمحه جماليه عن شيء نعم في حدا ثاني بيحب يحكي وفي فرق ما بين اللايف وما بين بريكنج نيوز هلا هلا بنحكي فيه كمان تفضل يعني اهميه الموبايل تكمن في مجالين اساسيين حسب رايي المجال الاول هو مجال تغطيه الاحداث السريعه اللي في اماكن ما بيكون فيها حريه للتعبير عن راي نتذكر دور الموبايل مثلا في ثوره ايران الخضراء نتذكر دور الموبايل في ليبيا حتى في احداث بعض الدول العربيه فانت في هاي الحاله بتكون بحاجه او حريق مش شرط يكون في او حريق او تسونامي يعني, يعني كل هاي الصور اللي هي وسائل الاعلام التقليديه ما بتصل لها بسرعه هاي النقطه الاولى والنقطه الثانيه اللي هي من خلال الانفستيجاتيف ريبورتس دور الموبايل ممكن يكون دور قوي اللي بنتذكر 
الفيديو اللي نشرته سي ان ان عن البيع العبيد في في ليبيا، الصوره ما كانت واضحه على الاطلاق ولكن الفيديو هذا انتشر كالنار بلا شيء، عشان انا بايد الاخ في في رايه. فهي الحالتين اللي بعتقد فيها دور الموبايل دور حيوي ودور اساسي ولا يوجد لا صحفي ولا مشاهد يتطلع الى الكواليتي في هاي الحاله بقدر ما ينظر الى القصه بحيث انه ياخذ المعلومه ياخذ السبق ويقوم بنشرها على السوشيال ميديا هذا تعليق على الموضوع لكن انا اذا بتسمحي لي في عندي سؤال الى بتعلق بالموبايل موجه لجلين طبعا موجه لجلين وموجه للضيوف اثنين الثاني اللي سمحك بس طبعا استاذ غسان اعلامي وقال لي الحق كمان يرد علي نعم طبعا في بعض الفيديوز المنتشره على السوشيال ميديا باشكالها المختلفه ربما يعني ممكن ناخذها كما هي من حيث النوعيه من حيث الجوده لكن اذا في محتوى صحفي معين من مؤسسه صحفيه معينا انا اعتقد انه يجب ان يكون هناك فكره واحد الماخذ على الموبايل او التصوير بالموبايل انه اصبح هناك تساهل في عمليه الستوري في عمليه الحصول على فكره قويه ذكرت حضرتك انه التكاليف التصوير عبر كرو كامل بتكلفنا 60000 بينما من خلال الموبايل 4000 يا هذا قد يقود الى انه اوكي اذا ما كان في سكريبت قوي اذا ما كان في قصه قويه ما هي التكاليف ايضا شويه منخفضه فممكن نطلع نغطي الستوري وبالتالي بنحصل على ستوري ضعيف وهي بعض المآخذ اللي احنا بناخذها على بعض القصص المنتشره عبر الموبايل انه نوت سكريبتد فيري ويل وبالتالي القصه مش عميقه مش جيده ومش يعني محبوكه بشكل جيد فايش رايك بهذا النقد حاب اسمع رايك بشكل شخصي اوكي دو يو دو يو وانت انسر ناو اور دو يو اف يو ويش اي جست دونت نو اف ماي مايكروفون از وركينج اف اي نيد تو جو اب ذير بت اني واي اتس فاين اي ثينك I think there's room for everything in I don't need the You don't need that. I think there's room for everything within this mixed economy. What mobile has brought is the democratization if you like of storytelling. There is this idea of the survival of the fittest or you know the cream always rises to the top. So good engaging content will get more likes, will get more engagement, will get shared more. I think that brings both an opportunity and a challenge. I think the opportunity is If journalists perfect their visual storytelling skill, they will reach a wider audience by virtue of the fact that one, they are a recognized and professional journalist. That's what their job is. That's where the whole fake news phenomenon and what we're seeing with the, the kind of Russian propaganda machine and all that stuff is a real risk because what's come out certainly as part of the investigation is that there are people posing as professional journalists who aren't professional journalists making content that looks slick and professional but is in fact professionally produced fake news so you it's a really really difficult one but one thing i didn't mention in the entire presentation is the idea of blockchain and where blockchain may actually feed in to this idea of personal signatures as we go forward i think it's only a matter of time particularly with the fake news phenomenon that we will get to the point where rather than being able to create multiple social media accounts just on a flimsy email account you basically will have a personal signature associated with your accounts that will be for good or for bad but it does mean that you get immediate accountability from the social media platforms and that should to a certain extent make it far more difficult to do this sway of professional fake news so sorry to go off topic slightly but i think the two things are related I think the immediacy of breaking news means that as you said the quality stuff is actually irrelevant it's all about the story okay people will take it square vertical horizontal or round they don't care as long as the content that they're getting is engaging and actually is relevant to them so i think it's it depends on the story type but again i would encourage you to not walk away from the idea of doing high end craft storytelling with this case and only settling for the breaking news live stream i think that's it's underselling if you will زي زي ما حكيت ثانك يو زي ما حكيت انه في فرق ما بين اللايف ستريم وما بين البريكنج نيوز بريكنج نيوز مش شرط يكون دائما لايف ستريم يعني ممكن الواحد ياخذ شوت لحريق او شوت لمظاهره او او مثلا سبيتش بس ما يكون مشغل از ا لايف لانه مثلا ممكن التليفون ما عندهوش انترنت وات ايفر بس المشاهد يعني من تجربتنا نحن بالسي ان ان البريكنج نيوز 
الناس تتقبله بصرف النظر عن الكواليتي اللي فيه لانه هي فقط عباره عن زي كانه هيدز اب او انه لمحه لهم ليعرفوا ايش اللي صاير فبالتالي التقرير الذي يلي ذلك بعد ما انه تكون القصه صارت معروفه كبريكنج نيوز هي الكواليتي اللي بتكون انت بتتوقعها او بتتوقعيها كمشاهدين من المؤسسه الاعلاميه اللي انتم بتتفرجوا عليها انها تعطيكم كواليتي افضل شوي وهذا بيكون واحد عنده وقت اطول بس بدي اذكركم اكيد كلكم شفتوا عمليه اعتقال صدام حسين مظبوط هذه تمت بموبايل تم تصويرها من السي ان ان كان في عندنا جونيور جيرنالست شب صغير بعثناهم للعراق شبين بعثناهم للعراق بموبايل وبلابتوب عمل السكوب وال يعني اخذ هذا السبق وعمله لايف ودا وغطى البريكنج نيوز على تقريبا يومين باستخدام الموبايل وباستخدام اللابتوب فهذا الشيء مستخدم كان من زمان يعني واحدة من الاشياء اللي انا اذكرها انه من اكثر من تقريبا 14 او او 15 سنه بدانا نتحدث عن اهميه الموبايل داخل مؤسسه السيانات وأو من اوائل الناس استخدموها بالفيل هو نيك روبرتسون اللي هو غطى احداث القاعده واللي صار بافغانستان وهو اساسا دخل اشتغل بمؤسسه كفني صوت شغل التقنيات تبعته باستخدام الموبايل وباستخدام التكنولوجيا ووفرها بشكل انه يقدر يغطي فيه شغله لحاله ومنها بدا انه هو الصحفي يكون لحاله بالموبايل وبالترايبود وبيطلع فيها لايف يعني هذا الشيء موجود في كثير شغلات انتم تقبلتوا وما زلتوا بتحكوا فيها هذه اصلا تصورت بموبايل فالتقبل الناس ما زال ما زال للبريك نيوز بصرف النظر مقبول الان تتفرجوا انتم على السوشيال ميديا تتقبلوا منها بكل شيء مقدم لكم اياه سواء كان الشوت سليم مش سليم آه وايد آه بعيد او قريب بصرف النظر بتتقبلوه لانه سوشيال ميديا بس السوشيال ميديا هي اصبحت الان وحده من السلطات اللي على اللي اعلم يعني نقول الصحافه هي السلطه الرابعه والسوشيال ميديا ايضا الخامسه في بعض المدرسين والاعلاميين بسموها السلطه الخامسه فاذا تتقبلها انت للسلطه الخامسه ليش ما تتقبلها للسلطه الرابعه تفضل استاذ مايكروفون لو سمحتي شكرا استاذ السوشيال ميديا الحين صارت ممكن تكون مو السلطه الخامسه ولا الرابعه هي صارت اعلى من الصحافه لانه صار الانسان يستخدمها بكل شيء بيستخدمها على الاقل صارت سلطه صارت اه مو السلطه الخامسه صارت نعم. الرابعه اللي اقل نعم. من الصحافه لان احنا نستخدم السوشيال ميديا اكثر من الصحافه وقليل اصلا منا يستخدم الصحافه خصوصا الجيل هذا اللي احنا فيه احنا وعينا على جيل السوشيال ميديا ما وعينا على جيل الصحافه ممكن كثير منا ما يقرا الجرايد او قرا جرايد بحياته كلها على السوشيال ميديا لان الحياة صارت ترتبط كلها بالسوشيال ميديا اما بدراسه ولا بحياه عاديه ولا باي شيء ولا بمعرفه الاخبار ومعرفه ايش اللي قاعد يصير صحيح صحيح انا انا بحييك على على ردك وبس بحب اذكركم بشيء للناس اللي هم يمكن من جيلي انه 70% من سكان العالم العربي هم عمرهم 30 سنه فمدود يعني احنا عم نحكي عن 70% من الناس اللي هم بتعاملوا زي ما تفضل الاخ بتعاملوا بقراوا الاخبار من ايش بيكون على السوشيال ميديا وطبعا بنفس الوقت احنا من يعني نتسابق انه نحن نستقطبوا لنا كاعلاميين اللي يجي يشوف مواقعنا ويجي يشوف محطتنا على الهدول في كل في منافسه تامه حتى كمان في 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 سبق بيطلع على السوشيال ميديا في من المواطنين الناس الناس اللي قاعد بالشارع اللي بيطلعوا بهيك سبق بحطوه على السوشيال ميديا عمالنا بنستعمله هذا بيزيد العبء علينا نحن كاعلاميين انه نتاكد انه هذا الخبر صحيح او مش صحيح وانت كمان بدك تصدقه او ما تصدقه فيعني هي الحلو انه هي نشطتنا كلياتنا كاعلاميين سواء كان الجيل الشاب زي حضرتك او الجيل الاقدم زي تفضل استاذ ممكن بس الميكروفون تفضل ماذا انعكاس الزحف الالكتروني واستخدام الموبايل على وظائف كثيره في قطاع الاعلام يعني من وجهه نظره برضو يعني يدينا نفسه كده على مدى انعكاس ذلك على الغاء الوظائف يعني زي المصورين وزي المنتجين وحتى المخرجين وبرضو سؤال انعكاس ده وتاثيره على الصحف المكتوبه استخدام أوكي. الموبايل 
يمكن هذا اكيد رح نيجي فيه هلا بحوارنا اللي هون I'm not gonna let you answer this question because I think this is an introduction that uh, غسان can start with uh, رح استنى بس عشان غسان يجاوبك على هذا الحكي تفضل uh, استاذ I have one question for Glenn Is there any respected uh, news agency in Europe or, or in the state that use only uh, social media tools? Okay, because you said that in English. Lots of those companies will use a mixed economy as well, but they're certainly not generally going out buying full broadcast equipment. They'll generally use phones, DSLRs, GoPros, and whatever is available to them. But they are high-end consumer technology, not professional solutions. At the same time, I could go on for an extended list of people that I know within different broadcasters as part of the European Broadcasting Union who are all focusing on Mojo. Um, S or F in, uh, ooh, is it Austria I think they're in? Or, or, or Switzerland. Um, and also uh, A, is it ADR in Germany? Both have fairly substantial pilot projects running, as does BBC now, all pushing the boundaries on getting their staff out with these devices to see what they can create. It's not just doing what you traditionally do. It's looking at new ways to tell stories. It's looking at new language for the way you tell stories. And in relation to, if I may, the comment about that, um, there's a lot of innovation and technology all the time. There will always be jobs. The idea is to adapt. And if YouTube can get whatever it is, 500 hours of content uploaded every single minute, trust me, If everyone in the general public can do it, the sound engineers and the cameraman can do it as well. Promise. So, so just come, go around, so we can combine with the the drone itself with the. Yeah. So, so it, it doesn't have to be just one. Yeah. If you can afford it, and you probably can. It will, it will be available in the, um, within the coming two years. It will be very easily, very easy to have drone that be uh, above the trans uh, journalists that can broadcast the events. As it is real. Yeah, it's, it's the, the, the technology is there. Yeah. It, yeah. It's actually a legislative problem that stops yeah. the journalists from doing it. Yeah. Um, th there's two, again, I don't want to go way off like topic. Like all the disaster, how, how are we covering the disasters, for example? Yeah. Using I, I would, I, 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 the natural disasters now, you can cover all drones. It's very difficult to cover something with cameras, with all these things. So the drones you can cover them, 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 you can cover them. فالان هذا اللي عماله بيصير كله هيك بتغطى بهذه الطريقه ما تخافش على الوظائف لانه الوظائف طول ما عندك قدره للتعلم في لك مجال وبنفس الوقت كمان ما تنسى انه انه في شهيه عاليه جدا بكل دائما الكونتنت ما زال ملك شوف انا بدي يمكن الاخ سعد اجى زارنا بسي ان ان بدبي وشاف الاستوديو تبعنا الاستوديو تبعنا الان يمكن وسالتونا وقتها لما اجيت زرتنا سعد انه طب وين الموظفين اللي بي اللي بيعملوا هذا الاستوديو؟ الاستوديو روباتيك كاميرا لحالها زي الروبوت تشتغل لحالها على سوفت وير على موبايل. يعني انا موجوده حاليا معك بطلع الموبايل، السوفت وير موجود وفي عندي ضيف الان موجود بدبي بده يطلع لايف على سي ان ان على سوفت وير. وما بديش موظفين، فيش فيش حدا بيكون موجود، عندي بس الحارس يفتح الباب للضيف ويقعد يحط السماعه بدنه والمايكروفون حدا تاني بيكون بيصير يحكي معه سواء كان باتلانتا هونغ كونغ بابو ظبي باي محل تاني فالهذا مش مش الان مش موجود بس هذا الحكي ما بيعني انه انه المكتب راح يكون فاضي طول الوقت انت عندك كونتنت عندك لسه في ما زال عندك نيوز جاذرينج جمع المعلومات ما زال هو البنيه الاساسيه لاي محطه اعلام بالعالم يمكن اخوان بالجزيره كمان بياكدوا الحكي هذا كمان انه this is something يعني اور بريد اند باتر يعني زي ما قلت لك اذا انت ما عندك قدره لجمع المعلومات ضاعت الحكايه ما فيش فيش معلومات فيها فلا زال في وظائف ناو اذا بتيجي على مكتب مثلا مكتب السي ان ان بالخليج اللي هي بالامارات المكتب مكتبين العمر الموجود كلهم اقل من 30 <تصفيق> هذا عفوا يعني طرت الوظائف لا ما طرت الوظائف لا انا ما قلت كلهم انا قلت الغالبيه العظمى منهم هم ليش لانه هذه التكنولوجي التكنولوجي